terminate a, uh, a plug. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover how to terminate a cable. We have a bad cable end here, right, with a plug. And now notice this is the hospital grade plug since we're studying medical equipment. We want to be able to repair this. Now, I'm going to tell you that this is a very common problem. In fact, actually, most of what we're going to do from here on out in this class is we're going to check for problems with the power cord. Uh, probably one of the single most high failure rate items on a piece of equipment. And most of that revolves around people just yanking on the plug and <laughs> pulling it out of the uh, out of the wall outlet. So I've got one end that's terminated here and, and I, frankly I took my time. I did a real good job on that. I'd like to show you how I did it. But I'd like to start with this other end and I'd like to do a termination on that and show you all how to, how to make that work. And uh, frankly, I'd like to show you some of the mistakes that people often make uh, when they're doing this. So this one we're going to mess up. Now there's a lot of different ways to cut off this insulation. And what they'll tell you is they'll say, hey, use a, uh, a dull knife, right? One of the things I found that really works very well is a decent sharp pair of scissors. Uh, it's just dull enough to where it doesn't tend to nick the wires underneath. So I'll be using that. What I like to do is I like to go over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have to to peel back some of this insulation. I'm going to go back approximately an inch and a half, right about there. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to roll the insulation against the knife here and sort of cut a path all the way around the cord and that's going to uh, cut through this first layer of insulation and give us a, uh, a decent pull off here. I'm going to just sort of strip that. Now I hope I was a little aggressive on here and I hope I nicked it. I think I went till I felt the nick. There we go. Now um, let me show you one of the problems. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Hopefully you've got your diagonal cutters, right? I'm going to use my diagonal cutters and I'm just going to snip this off of here <clears throat> just a little so that we can clean this up. Sometimes this is plastic, sometimes this is paper, but uh, you don't need it. Just snip that off. Now, I did this just the way I wanted to. Do you see a problem? That is a broken insulation on the worst wire possible. And I just, I, I nailed it. Uh, sometimes, you know, <laughs> you want to do an example. This is what you cannot do. At this point in time, what you got to do is you got to clip it right here and start over. And that's okay. That happens in the field. That's why we give ourselves a little extra room in which to work. You know, if you need six feet of, uh, of power cord, sometimes going eight feet, it's not a bad idea. Uh, there really isn't, generally speaking, a piece of equipment that's going to be negatively impacted by having a slightly longer power cord, right? So you'll be good. I mean, we, just don't give it 100 feet. You know, you all know what is ridiculous, right? So that's a bad thing. This is one of the things you don't want to do. You don't want to nick that wire and remove the insulation. You want the rest of them to look like the other ones did here. That, it isn't a nick. Okay, you want the rest of them to look nice and smooth here. <clears throat> and uh, so that's what you want to get accomplished. Uh, the next thing we want to do, of course we want to disassemble our plug for the sake of speed. I've already done that. We've got our plug uh, measurement right here. I don't know if you, you can't really see that very well on this video. But uh, there you can see it just a little, um, that line that's right there. As I read it, it tells me that this portion from, uh, let's see if I can get a point, from this point back needs to be insulation, and from this point forward, is the scissor in the way, from this point forward needs to be the wire. So <clears throat> if you look here, that's pretty much how I uh, I snipped this one. Was in compliance with that with the guide that's on the back of this plug. And I, I know in the video you can barely see it. <clears throat> so that's how long I'm going to cut these wires. Now I'm going to do this one wrong so that y'all can see this. Yes, Mark. You clip off the, the, the you, you make the ground wire longer before you strip off the 
hands? That's a good point. Actually, I've done that with this. His point was, and thank you for reminding me, that these cables do need to be slightly longer. The ground wire does need to be slightly longer. You can't hardly see that, but it is approximately an eighth of an inch longer than those other two. Now what he's talking about is you simply start right here, move it back an eighth of an inch, and snip those two so that we've got that, that wire length right there, right? So there we go, you can see it a little better that way. And uh, there are times in which you need to worry about perfect. That isn't necessarily one where you have to obsess about exactly an eighth of an inch, but generally, yeah, that, that, that uh, uh, ground wire needs to be a little longer. So I'm gonna measure this. I'm going to snip this here. And I'm gonna take my wire strippers and I'm just going to do this the wrong way. I'm going to strip that out and I yanked on it and I did that perfectly again. <laughs> I can ruin things let me tell you. Okay so I don't know if you can see it here I'll try and get it close to the camera there are little hairs sticking up right there. The reason why there are little hairs sticking up is because I clipped a lot of the strands. See those strands um, most of those strands are actually in the cabling right here. And the reason why they're, they're stuck in there, you, know, you can see that they're stuck in there, that little silvery bit, is because I used the wrong snips. And I deliberately used the wrong snips. Now look at these. Do you see a problem? We have AWG, right? And it starts at 22 and goes to 30. Those are wire gauges right? Remember the higher the number the smaller or the thinner the wire. These are actually designed for very fine wires. Does anyone remember what type of gauge this is? It's a 14 gauge and if you want to you can look on here and it should tell you, ooh it's actually a 16 gauge. Uh, it says so, no I had it right the first time. AWG American wire gauge right 16 AWG so <clears throat> these are definitely too uh, too small so what I like to do is I like to use a wire gauge like this see and these things are literally flaking off and I'm getting little bits you can barely see them little flecks of wire that are coming off so what I like to do is and I'm just gonna match that up get an approximate distance. What I like to do is I like to use a correct snip and then I gently snip it and I sort of go around in a circle and sometimes it helps just sort of ring it. And take your time, you know? Don't be in a hurry, don't just rip it out. When it's done correctly, a properly stripped wire will just pull right out and look at how much stranding I've got there in comparison to the black one now. I've got a lot of stranding there. Rather than spend all my time worried about stripping these, I went ahead and I, I stripped the other end and we'll just switch over to that. But if I flip it in both directions here, I won't find any type of, uh, of burrs sticking up. And if I look down in, the, in that insulation, it came off nice and clean and uh, there's absolutely no strands in there. It's very important because if you change the diameter of the cable, if you change the diameter of that wire, you actually increase the resistance. And higher resistance dissipates energy in the form of heat. That's a fancy way of saying it gets hot, right? So it's going to get hot and hot means fire and we definitely don't want to fire. So uh, I'll show you how you how you put together the rest of the plug. I'm going to run the cable end that I just terminated through, right? I'm going to find my correct plugs. Remember dark to dark, light to light, green to green. That's just that simple. So black goes to the dark one right here, right? I'm going to put that in. Ooh, those clamps need to be ran down. I could have, well, no, they are ran down. Good. <clears throat> There's a clamp inside of there, and turning a screw, I don't know if you can see it very well, moves a clamp in or out, right? 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my black contact right in there. Try and put it in to where the insulation is inside and not showing right at this point. We really don't want to have insulation showing at that point. We want to have a good proper um, insulation coverage so that we don't have any stray flex. If there are any flex like this they can definitely short out the plug and we don't want to do that. So <clears throat> it's very difficult to see but the wire is in there and is clamped in between the two metal plates and there is no insulation in between that wire. This is probably about the the, the shallowest you would want to have that insulation. Notice it's not going up past the back of the plug. So that's the black goes to the bronze, the white goes to the silver and it, it helps to twist these so that they don't fray on you. White goes to the silver and we'll tighten that down. And the green goes to the green. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so that's connected. Now what you want to do here is you want to turn this till you find the little notch. There's a little notch right there at the green. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little notch right here on the plug. There, you can see it down there, right? I'm going to line that notch up right about where my green is here, and I'm going to put the plug together, right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten these at this point. I do have a couple sets of screwdrivers here as necessary, so I'll tighten this down. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through and cover, you know, testing of this. Just uh, I'll cover it briefly. <clears throat> now you can see that there we've got an insulation in here. This is a clamp that bites down on that you want to make sure that it's shoved in there pretty good so that you can see just the insulation you can barely see the wires I put that in past this clamp I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to clamp it down it feels pretty good sometimes it's safer to work like this by the way if you've ever had a smaller screwdriver stab you in the hand. It's because uh, I was holding it the wrong way. Sometimes I catch myself doing that stuff, you know. But there you can see in the back how it's clamped in and it's holding that insulation. And if you were to pull on it, this will definitely not come loose. So there you go. There's a properly terminated plug.